Welcome back to the Up 20 podcast. I'm your host, Coach Karan Godwin, North Florida Hall of Fame basketball player and owner of BallHogGloves.com. My co-host is my, my man, Mr. B. Dot. All right, Brian Inge, consultant, coach, entrepreneur, and uh, just a giver. So, B. Dot, how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. It's a nice Wednesday morning. Uh, not too cold. Still a little chilly. Sun's starting to come out. Give a little glimpse of uh, what's ahead of us in the next few months. So, Feeling good, man. Feeling good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Doing great. Can't, couldn't be better, man. So let's start the show off right. Uh, give me a quick verse and also a hip hop lyric of the culture. Okay. Uh, so I'll I'll keep it simple uh, this week. Uh, last week I gave my my a Bible verse that was near and dear to my heart that I actually have tattooed on me. Uh, this one uh, it's kind of the, it's more universal, something that everyone relates to, but something that I, I kind of use to keep me in sync and in level-headed when things are either going too tough or just when I want to feel closer to, to, to God. So this one is John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's special to me because even though, you know, you know how it is, we, we have great uh, dreams and goals that we try to see, but as, as time, we all fall short because we are humans. We all, we are, are all not without sin. So this lets us know that, you know, he, he loves us for who we are, and as long as we continue on the path to righteousness, we shall be okay. And, that, and, and that's an awesome verse because uh, one of the reasons that we have so many flaws is that God wants us to depend on him. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's the purpose of the flaws. I know everybody tries to get rid of them, and we always want to work on ourselves and better, mm -hmm. but the reason why we have flaws is because without them, you wouldn't think you needed God. So that, that's a great verse. And uh, uh, one for the culture. A uh, 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 quote for the culture, or, or um, a, a verse from the culture. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it light today. Um, my 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 favorite artist right now is, is Drake. So I can. Um, I don't even have a, a quote. I'm, I'm a little unprepared on, on the on the, the quote. But off the top of my head, my my favorite Drake lyric is um. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. I'll, I'll let you go first and I'll come back to it. Okay, definitely, definitely. So let me go ahead with the verse. Uh, yours was definitely foundational, you know what I'm saying, to our, to our Christian faith. Um, You know, sacrifice, you know, only begotten son, believe in him, you know, path to eternal life. So that, that's awesome. Um, mine is um, Proverbs 29, um, 18. And um, basically it says, where there's no vision, the people perish. And, um, you know, Proverbs is obviously from Solomon, the wisest man that ever walked the earth. And that verse means if you don't have a plan for your future, for your kids, for your life, you know, this is the reason why people perish. And um, one of the things that you always hear is that if you don't have a plan, then someone has a plan for you, you know. So mm -hmm. I try to always live my life. Obviously, all your plans are not going to work out, but there's a thought process that goes into strategizing <laughs> And um, that helps, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you talk about the next generation and, and building a lifelong legacy and generational wealth. Yeah. Um, my verse, man, Young Jeezy, um, Sky's the Limit. One of the things he said that, that really struck me, I think, uh, you know, I was early 20s at the time. And he said, um, anything you put your mind to, put your grind to. And that was, that was just, you know, unbelievable because, you know, you have to really put, you know, faith without works is dead. So you have to, it's not about saying stuff. I know you have a lot of guys that talk to you about all these ideas. Everybody has an idea. Everyone has a main idea, but what about the effort that goes into it? What about that work until process, right? And then later on, um, the very next verse, he says, men do what they want, boys do what they can. Whew. Now that, that really hit me hard because um, mm -hmm. now, now we're talking about the freedom. We're talking about the maturation process of you becoming a man in, in, in your faith and becoming a man financially. Um, on becoming financially literate to become free um, and, you know, your emotional state, like all these things allow you to become a man, you know, and if you want to do what you want, these are things you got to accomplish, you know, so he said men do what they want, boys do what they can. I'm like, oof. <laughs> well, I, I, I found one for me and it's fairly recent, like I'm, I'm a big Drake fan. I think he, he makes music for every emotion. Uh, so a lot of times when when I'm trying to get motivated, or I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get in a creative space, I'll listen to some, something that gets me going. So he came out with a song on his newest uh, album called No Friends in the Industry. And, uh, you know, one, one quote he said, he said, my brother's been my brother's. And, you know, you guys ain't no kin to me. And that's a fact. So it, a lot of people can take that as like, oh, you know, he, he's stunned. He's talking a lot of, a lot of cash or whatever. But came up with, you know, he stayed loyal to the people that are around him. 
that helped him get to where he was. He didn't forget about them because no one can get to anywhere they want to be by themselves. You know, as much as we like to think that, you know, we are all, you know, as so mighty, if we have the power, we have the will to get anything done. But in all actuality, you need people around you to keep you humble, to keep you grounded and to make you be the best version of yourself. So I, I will, with that, I would like to say all to you, my brother, thank you for being kin to me and all, all, all the other folks around me who have helped me to become the person I am as well. Oh, yeah, of course, man. It takes teamwork, make the dream work. And I think that once you understand that, and, and a big part of this podcast, man, we're giving to the next generation, obviously, you know, to the ballers, to the baller parents and, and everybody that that decides to actually, um, you know, give us the ear. And um, you, you can't do it by yourself. There's just no way Absolutely. you you know what I'm saying? Blessings come through people. And that's just yeah. how it works, you know? Um, with that being said, I mean, let, let's talk about the foundation of the podcast. Obviously, we, we always start with the scripture and, uh, and a verse from the culture just to let people know, uh, know what we're about, you know, as, as Christian men and leaders. But Up20, um, the meaning of that, you know, when I came up with that concept, um, Up20 is a mentality. Um, when you're Up20, uh, there's two choices, right? You can keep your foot on the gas and do the things that got you there, Right. Or you can let your foot off the gas and feel like you already made it, right? And usually you, you'll see that, like you'll see teams up twenty, but they're they're not they're playing not to lose versus playing to win. And you see the other right. team kind of kind of comes back because when you're up twenty, there's things that come with that. There's pressure. There's people talking about you. You know. Mm-hmm. There's people throwing stones at you. You know. And you have to have the mentality to get by that. You know what I'm saying? That's that up twenty. And the second thing from the from the coach's perspective. When you're up 20, especially as you get later in the game, this is your time to give back to those players that may not be getting as much playing time. You know, the people that are on the floor at the time, but the people that actually helped those starters, you know, in the development and um, making sure that that you can even get up 20. So it's, it's about the give back process as well uh, with this um, podcast is founded on. So what, what does that up 20 mean to you? Um, For me, um, I think I'll, I'll take it to what our mission is kind of trying to, teach or not teach but just trying to promote being successful using the game of basketball or whatever it is that's your foundation as a tool to to get to where you want to get to so when you think of up 20 my first thing that came to my mind was like you know up 20 you know you're doing well the game's almost in hand uh, how you kind of mentioned how when you're up 20 you can either let your foot off the gas or keep going you can put the reserves in let them get some run as well so um for that i put it i said up 20 run the clock or up 20 without uh shooting the rock run the clock and so we're, since we're promoting uh, being more than just athletes, I think, you know, up 20 without shooting the rock is huge. You can be up 20 in life without having to bounce a basketball. You know, it's life is what you make it. So and once you're up 20, you know, it's over, you know, yeah. run that clock. We out of here. So that, that was, that's my stake on it. Yeah, man, that's pretty good. Then this weekend, we actually uh, went to a tournament. And in this tournament, when, people, when teams get up 20, you actually win the game. And um, I've never been to a really a tournament like that. Usually they just you know, let the game um, play out. But mm-hmm. they, they were actually out there. Um, they, they were out there balling this weekend, man. We, we had some pretty good games. Um, um, transitioning, um, talking about uh, your greatest basketball story, man. I have a story, and I believe that this is probably one of the greatest basketball stories of all time. Uh, we, we have a, a basketball player by the name of um, Darrell Armstrong. Uh, mm-hmm. He played for the Orlando Magic. You know, I remember seeing him because uh, Orlando Magic, and that's why they did in my heart. Not only did I, they give me the opportunity to have a pre-draft workout with Orlando Magic, but they used to actually come to our facility to to do their pre-season um, um, stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I got an opportunity to like see these guys up front and kind of see NBA practices and prepare my mind mentally as into what that would look like or be. And um, Darrell Armstrong was one of those older guys that got in the league a little bit older, and I didn't know his story. And um, to make a long story short, he was a field goal kicker, all right? And um, the late uh, Coach Capel, um, you know, Jeff Capel's um, dad, and and um, he was actually, you know, uh, looking for talent, and Darrell was actually playing intramurals. So imagine yourself, you know, you're going out there, you recruit kids all the time on the path, but in his own gym, there's a kid named uh, Darrell Armstrong, who was a field goal kicker. He goes and they call him to the gym and this kid's just killing, he's killing everybody. So he took him to the side and said, hey, man, you're playing basketball. And that's God. <laughs> you know, he ended up playing basketball, all conference, you know, went overseas, played pro and came back and made the NBA. So to go from an intramural situation, you weren't even a basketball player or on the team to, to, to the NBA is unbelievable. Uh, you, you got any stories? You know, I had one before 
we came on that I wanted to share, but now uh, hearing yours, I think I want to share the story about uh, Steve Francis, man. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people know his story, uh, but you know, Steve was a great talent. Uh, as a kid, had some challenges with his upbringing, uh, family uh, stuff, you know, a lot of stuff you see in the black community. But, um, you know, he was always a great basketball player. And uh, for whatever reason, he didn't play in high school, um, but still found a way to get his GED and make it to a junior college and did his thing. And before you know it, he's at the University of Maryland. Yeah. And a year later, he's in the NBA. And if you think in that two or three year span, he was pretty much, uh, you know, I, mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth in his story, but, you know, he, he wasn't where he thought he was going to be. You know, so that shows you how your life can change at the, the drop of a dime if you have the right mindset and the right dedication. Yeah. And also probably the right people around you, right? Pushing you in different directions to, yep. to, to go ahead and, um, you know, go through that process, that JUCO process, man. So that's, Absolutely. yeah, that's another great story. Um, and I think with him, man, I think he wrote an article that he went from standing on the corner to being in a suit sitting next to Kim Olajuwon, and it was like a three-year span. It was it was it was something that crazy. Was, something that was just crazy, man. So um, that's definitely awesome. Um, let's talk about uh, Steph Curry in the, in the latest statement, and uh, people actually, you know, blaming Steph Curry for the state of basketball and all these bad shots, and he said, "Stop tagging me." Every time right. he touches a bag shot, I didn't tell him to shoot that, you know. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on that? Did, did Steph Curry mess up the game a little bit? I, I don't think so. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, whenever there's a big shift in the, how the game of basketball is played, uh, so they, they always say someone is, is uh, wrecking the game. Right now it's Steph Curry. Um, before then, it was probably um, iso ball or, 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 yep. or Kobe, a uh, hero ball, or you want to call this? You know, yep. Before that, it was Allen Iverson. Before that, it was someone else, probably. So uh, you're always going to get those who, who are trying to make a story of why things are changing or why kids are doing things the way they are. But it's it's just the signs of times. Not too long ago, we were all praising Steph Curry for being so relatable and uh, a superstar that everyone can kind of achieve to be because he's so like pretty much normal. He's not super athletic. He's a a guy that's our size. He can just shoot the ball really well. He's still in and went well. But now we're trying to say that we're not weird. People are trying to say that he's wrecked the game. So it just kind of shows how um, there's always going to be naysayers. or not naysayers, but there's always going to be people who are trying to throw salt on the wound or make a story out of nothing. And that's kind of how what, what media is these days, unfortunately. So, yeah. you know, it, it's part of the game. Not part of the game. It's, 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 it, it is what it is, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'd, I'd agree with you. I mean, obviously, he's an unbelievable player. Not many people can um, – can do what he does, man. I mean, the best shooter we've seen all time. I think he spawned kids like Trey Young. You know, Trey's a kid that can actually, you know, um, play like him, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Shoot from deep and do some unbelievable yep. things. Yep. Not, not, not that many people can do it, man. So, so yeah. So, um, the, the N NIL, right? Yeah, I know yes. some questions on that, man. What, what are your thoughts on, on um, the, the state of college basketball and them allowing kids both in high school and college to actually make an income for themselves. I see that. Um, I think Mikey Williams, they have him over $2 million right now. Yeah. Bronny at $5 million. Yeah, Bronny at $5 million, um, which he'll probably get, you know, whether he, uh, whatever school he should, uh, decides to go to. And also the, 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 the kid that has one arm, what's his name? Hansel. Hansel. Hansel, you know. So um, I, I'm excited about it. What, what are your thoughts? I am as well. Um, I, was, I have a lot of conversations about the NIL and how the impact it's having on grassroots basketball and basketball in general. Um, everything's changing. Now, with the NIL, I think it's great, first off, for, for folk, everyone to get paid off of their, their own image likeness and um, their work. Um, for me, um, my, my issue is like, how are we going to, like, how does it change grassroots basketball? It's, we see how it's changing collegiate athletics. Um, it's right in front of us. Um, soon, I wonder if there's going to be athletes that are going to take the, the route that was going on Jackson State, going to the HBCUs and, and, and being part of that. Instead of, you know, you being an employee, for instance, like these, some of these high major universities, these blue bloods, I'm thinking there might be opportunity to be more partners with a lot of these smaller HBCUs who could really benefit from your image and likeness or being a part of their, their institution. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing how that's going to play out. And, um, and besides that, on the grassroots level, I mean, with, with like you said, with Mikey Williams and Bronny James, uh, DJ Wagner, all these type of guys, even guys that aren't as, as prominent, uh, you would like to see, uh, I think, I lost, sorry, I thought I lost you a second. You would like to see, like, what's going on? What's, what's going to happen? How is AAU going to stay the same? Is high school basketball going to say stay the same? Like, NIBC is in, in 
the ESPN with the NIBC is kind of changing things. Uh, same thing with grassroots basketball, the EYBL and UAA and Adidas and, and the three strikes league. What's going to happen? Um, things change when 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 big money and, and big uh, media partners get involved. So I'm just I'm just curious to see how that's going to look. But what about you? What are your thoughts on? You know, I think that is a tremendous opportunity. Obviously, um, you've seen people uh, branding their kids pretty much early on social media. And um, now there's the means to actually monetize that, which is pretty cool. Um, I think that in the past, I've seen kids that were literally worth millions of dollars, whether you invented a layup, whether you invented a lifestyle, but they couldn't capitalize on it. I mean, just right. just think about a couple of years ago um, when when guys are popular on social media and they have the whole, literally have the whole world doing certain things and, mm -hmm. and repping a brand. Um, those kids are worth millions of dollars and a lot of them couldn't take advantage of it. So um, I think that, you know, when you look at Chris Weber, you know, and yeah. you know, him and mentioning that he couldn't afford his own Jersey. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that was his next level. I mean, it really hits you hard when you, when you realize that here's a kid that's worth millions of dollars on um, the fat five was more popular than majority of NBA teams at that time, bringing them more revenue. Um, black socks, ball heads, um, you know. Do you think about on the, on the grassroots level, KG, you think of somebody like uh, Akil Carr or, or even back in the day when how John Wall was so big on the YouTube and Ball is Life, all those type of platforms. Imagine if they were able to get compensated or make um, money off their likes image. That's a, a totally I, different Isaiah, Isaiah Washington, Jelly Fan. Yeah, Jelly Fan. Yeah. Javon Quinn, all those guys. Like, imagine they were able to make you know, real money off of their image and likenesses. I mean, oh they had God. huge cult followers. I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, I mean, every kid in the country would have been wearing, you know, jelly socks or jelly shirts or jelly hats or jelly sneakers. You know, it's like you're right. So, hold on, KG. My 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 think my power core is not working. Give me one second. I mean, to cut. All right, we good. Give me like thirty. I'm getting out of the chart. Give me thirty seconds. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest um, things about this and, and being able to monetize your brand is now that you have to see yourself as a brand. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so in order for you to generate the millions of dollars, um, you know, if you don't have a father like LeBron, you're really going to have to keep your social media clean. You know, mm -hmm. these companies, you know, whether it be, you know, a sports drink or a shoe company, like now, you know, you have to really watch what you put in your social media because now they're evaluating the scene how marketable you are, you know? And um, yeah. so that, that means maybe, you know, your personal stuff, you start a, a different account with a nickname that most people don't even know, you know? And your main account is everything clean. You know, everything, right. going to school, basketball, working out, like the things that promote um, this income opportunity that, you know, you're actually able to actually get. So um, I think that's the biggest change for me. Um, just making sure that that parents and kids are, are understanding that this social media thing is powerful. And for me, to be honest, um, I know a lot of people want to go to the NBA, but um, most players are worth more in college than they ever will be in the pros. You know, um, you, you could take guys in the G League, like a lot of those guys are stars, mm -hmm. right? but they're not worth as much maybe in the G League than they are in that Kansas uniform. Because in that Kansas uniform, they literally can go to the mall, put a post and say pictures with, you know, Brian Ange from Kansas University at the mall. You get a picture and you get a T-shirt and the line would be wrapped around the corner. Right. Yeah. And even as a pro, when they do that, you know, you don't play for Kansas anymore. So it's like, yeah, I remember you. But, you know, so I think that the opportunities to, to monetize and, and even in small schools, I remember North Florida, you know, my, my little cousin actually broke my scoring record. Right. I had the all-time scoring record. He broke it. I didn't know he was my cousin at the time. My grandma called me. He was like, hold on, Dallas Moore. He's like, where's he from? And we, we ended up figuring out he's my cousin. But we had a conversation with him as he was um, in summer league NBA with, I think, Denver, I believe. And he was saying how it got so crazy on campus that they had to change his 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 um, classes scheduling because he couldn't even get to class. You know what wow. I'm saying? And that's talking about the small school uh, division one in North Florida. So uh, imagine the income opportunity there, you know, Absolutely. you know, or you, uh, you're the leading scorer at Vermont. Are you kidding me? Right, like, right, right. Like, like some of these places, that's all they have is college, you know, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I, I'm just kind of glad that, um, you know, they've opened up the floodgates and, um, and now it's time for guys to be creative, get the, the right guys around them with the right mindset 
and um, you know, create that echo. And th that's what I was gonna say. That's that's key, getting the right people around you. Uh, I've had some people ask me like, do I need an agent um, right now or somebody that works in that type of capacity? Well, maybe not an agent, but you need someone who's advising you. And that, that advice could be a parent who's knowledgeable about the process, who's not about business. You don't have to have a, someone from CAA or Clutch Sports from, from day one. No, just get somebody who, who you trust, who you know in your corner, who can help you make the valid decisions and help you grow as a, as a businessman because that's what it is now. You're not just, you know, you're not you're not just Karan God when Brian is the player. You're 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 a brand. You're promoting promoting a brand, and you want other brands to invest in you. So you know you have to do things a certain way, and it kind of changes the the type of thinking that is going on in our community, which is which kind of goes back to some of the things that we discussed, which we would want to promote as well. You know, being well rounded individuals, not just athletes. So it all it all plays together. Hopefully, we um. Our, our community can, can work to use this to our advantage and not just make it a, a me thing, but a, a we thing. Definitely, definitely. And um, that um, leads to uh, philosophies and, and networking, um, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, with mine, I think I shared it with you a little bit earlier, my network of philosophy that I teach my kids and people around me, even when I, when I was at school, my number one rule was um, um, you don't have to like them, but they have to love you, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's important, especially for a lot of um, basketball players, because I have to talk guys at the, off the ledge all the time. Oh, my coach, my assistant coach, I don't like him. I don't rock with him, da, da, da. I'm like, this is the person that's going to give you the opportunity to go to college. Or if you're a junior college, who do you think they're talking to? They're not talking directly to you. They're talking <laughs> right. to around you, right? Absolutely. So if you have the mentality, like, I'm not rocking with you because you did this to me or you said that, I'm like, you shoot yourself in the foot. And that goes for everybody, you know, in any mm -hmm. situation, you know, you, you need you need people around that even though you don't like them, they have to love you. And uh, number two is you never want to, um, you want to avoid making invisible enemies. Yeah, that's number two. I know you and I talked about certain topics that we can even talk on this platform, but it's like, if you do things, you know, on purpose that, you know, are going to go after certain people. Obviously, you know, nowadays you have blogs and gossip and this and that and that. Um, you're creating enemies you don't even know, you know? So like, for instance, someone may not know that you and I are that type. You know, they go after you and then they, I have an opportunity for them right. and I find out that they did you wrong. They created an invisible enemy, enemy that they didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And that could have been two years. You know, that could have been two years removed mm -hmm. from the incident, you know? So um, what's your network and philosophy? And what do you think about that? I, my, I would think my first is be authentic, be who you are. Uh, you definitely, like what you said is, is, is spot on. You want to be likable. You don't have to like the people, but you have to be likable. But I would think be authentic, you know, be who you are. Um, you don't want to get in a situation where you're, you're putting on a front that's not who you are. Because if, if anything that's not authentic, it's going to get found out eventually. You can't run from who you are. Like Jay-Z said it. I, I probably should say this for my quote. I mean, like, man, you was who you was when you first got here. Yeah. You know, so that's that's the first one. And the second is uh, know what you want. Uh, know going into it, have a plan, have a plan for what you want. Um, I'll, I'll tell a quick story. I had someone who was interning under me and um, she was very adamant about what she wanted out of her career. So I'm like, OK, well, this is what you want. You know, this is what you need to do. And we had conversations and, and lo and behold, that it kind of uh, it took a while, but she was able to get to where she wanted to get because she had a plan. She knew what she wanted. Now, when, with that plan, she had to like diverge and, and, and go around around winding roads like all of us do, but she had a plan to and a goal to get somewhere and she was able to get there. So just be intentional about what you, with, with what you want. Yes, and I think a lot of times, um, oftentimes we need perspective, especially when we're young. Um, I remember being, you know, 23, 24 and, and thinking that, you know, if I just read, read this and I can understand this, that um, one plus one will equal two and I'll just be successful. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's like, I'm gonna be a millionaire before 30. I'm gonna do this, da, 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 da. Right. And uh, many times um, people don't understand that, um, you know, I came up with a philosophy that one plus one is three. And that means that there's always an unknown variable. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes in that. And that unknown variable could be a connection. It could be a hookup. So for instance, you and I are going for the same job, right? I have the schooling. I came from a better school than you. I'm looking at your resume. I'm looking at mine. I'm thinking I got the job. But what I don't know is that you know, you did an internship two years prior for this same firm and the guy that's picking is, is your cousin, you know? <laughs> so, so I'm thinking, you know, I got the job in hand, but uh, many times um, one plus one equals three, you know? And and when you understand that, it, it braces you for life because everyone thinks 
that things are supposed to play out a certain way. And when you're young, you don't have the perspective or the wisdom, all right, to understand how a lot of these games is played. And a lot Absolutely. of them, yeah, a lot of them is behind the scenes and it's very much so relationship based, you know? So when, when I think of, you know, things that occurred and happened in my life and even now, you know, the reason why I go so hard at, and create networks and, and things for my kids and, and the people around me is because I understand that one plus one is three. You know, it's not it's not always gonna play out the, the way you think. Yeah, and I, and you know, you you maybe think of one other thing, and I would say, go into it's it's okay not knowing something. I've it's, I've heard this one time, a few times. Like the smartest person in the room is not always the one who's talking. It's the one who is is the one who knows he's a fool meaning he, he knows that he doesn't know but he's eager to find out he's eager to ask questions he's eager to do the research and so those are the people like you don't have to be the most brilliant person but being inquisitive being someone who's willing to learn willing to take the initiative to find out something those are the people that tend to go farther you know, it, it's, it's work ethic not necessarily just having the necessary skill you know work until there you go. There you ah, go. You go. <laughs> there you go. Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's it's crazy that you say that because I think you, as a coach, you see that in your players. Um, the first thing you know when you recruit a kid or a kid comes on your team and he's new, um, as a coach, we always evaluate his cognitive ability. You know, um, does he get what I'm saying? You know, what I'm saying yeah. if if I run this play and I put it on the board, can he execute? You know, because everybody can't do that. Right. You know? You got some tremendous players that, you know, just have very good instincts. They're geniuses. Um, you know, they have a physical genius. They can just make things happen. They're inst inst instinctive. But um, when you sit them down and you give them a game plan or a strategy or it's against them, sometimes it's just not there, you know? You yeah, yeah. And in college, you see this a lot because, you know, imagine you playing at a the ACC school, a Big Ten school, uh, a Big 12 school. I mean – there's, if you're the leading scorer, there are assistant coaches that make hundreds of thousands of dollars whose job it is to find out your flaws <laughs> and to, to shut you down, you know? So, you know, out of conference play, you're doing your thing. You know, they average in 20. By the time a conference comes, all those coaches have all that data. He doesn't like going left. He doesn't have to like going right. And um, in those situations, man, that's when the help of your coaches comes into play. Because even though you have millions of dollars trying to stop you, you have millions of dollars trying to help you as well. You know, Absolutely. here's what they like to do on defense, all right? Um, here's this particular player, here's his weakness, you know? He, he's prone to put his hands on people, he's prone to foul. So, so um, you know, what, what's your take on um, players that are coachable and that can, can actually take directions and listen? Um, <laughs> I, I like players who are coachable, but I also like players who 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 will um, not question uh, why we're doing something, but have the have the right questions. For instance, um, if you if you've shown the capacity, for, playing for me, coming from my experience, if you've shown the capacity that you can execute what I'm asking you to execute, you um you're a floor general, you do everything right. If you come to me and ask me like, Coach, why don't we do something like this? Or why like I saw this? Like why don't we do this? I'm more likely to listen. You know what I'm saying? So I think uh, for me, just being coachable is is a two way street. Um, being able to execute and if you're executing you're showing the, the, the basketball iq the intelligence the capacity to be a to be accountable and then you know now i'll give you the the, the floor the room to, to express what you believe and what you see to be true because more because you've shown that for for lack of better words that you can be a leader you have you are the actual coach on the floor yeah definitely man so i know you have a couple questions as well man go ahead and shoot oh so the first one when we talked about the nil already uh i guess the next thing, what do you think are some some promising careers in sports? I mean, we, we both work in sports uh, in all aspects of it. We, we've seen a lot, seen it all. But um, what, do you, what do you think some young uh, entrepreneurs or some young sports-minded, uh, business-minded folks can, can get, get into and to, to want to can try to be successful without just playing uh, a sport? Okay, so I look at it like this. Um, the basketball is a billion dollar business. Sports is a, it's a multi-billion dollar business, right? And within that, you're going to have careers and, and people that are making money. I think I, I did a post not too long ago when when I actually told, you know, the kids, I said, look, you know, the minimum salary of an NBA ref is $250,000 a year. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Meanwhile, they're not even working all year. 
You know, if your parent makes 250, puts them in the top, you know, 7% of the whole world, like they're working every day. Most right. Of the, all right. So I'm like, you have the expertise, you have the athleticism, you just don't have the mentality to even know that. And that's minimum. So mm-hmm. minimum making over 12,000 a month and right, good retirement. Right. So, so that's something that guys aren't thinking about. Um, coaching going directly into coaching and one of the things i did was as soon as i finished playing you know i had my nba trial with the Atlanta magic i had a couple classes left and coach said uh you know why don't you come on staff and i said cool i, I got two things just don't don't yell at me in front of the guys you know I, i'm not doing laundry you know what i'm saying i, I can't go from all time leader score to do a lot right right yeah can't do that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm not doing the laundry because they the fellas would have tore me up right so he was like yeah yeah he started laughing he's like i got you so um coaching um there's so many different ways to carve out a career coaching whether it be high school whether it be um college whether it be nba whether it be grassroots whether it be um event planning which you're going into um actually my first job uh was the athletic director of the ymca i had um over 80 teams so with those 80 teams on any given night i probably had six to ten gyms going at one time I'm hiring referees. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually running a business, you know, at 22, 23 years old. Um, that was actually, you know, like you're doing it. So you know how hard it is, but also about how lucrative that can be um, if you develop the right relationships and the right team, right? Yeah. Um, sports broadcasting. One of one of my colleagues that I talk about a lot, my business partner Stephen Bardo. Uh, he's a guy that went straight from uh, Final Four, Final Line I think that's 88 or 89. Uh, he went to the NBA, he went overseas, and he fell right back into a sports broadcasting role, um, similar to Jalen Rose and guys like that. Like, there's a ton of those jobs available. I mean, every every college basketball game has sports broadcasters, somebody of this color. So there's tons of opportunity, and I know I'm going to plug him because he has an, actually a course coming out where he can teach you um, how to become a sports broadcaster. So if you're interested in that, just, just hit us up, you know, in the comment section or something like that, and we'll – We'll shoot you his way. Um, you know, I went the entrepreneur route. You know, I started my own business. I started while I was actually working a W-2. I started the business with training. Then it went into to products, you know what I'm saying? Then I, then I wrote a book, right? Yeah, everyone hits the ball, all the score. I got, you know, equipment and um, uh, digital products. Um, just all types of stuff that you can do with the game. Um, become an athletic director. So I think it's limitless. It's just figuring out um, your personality, um, what you want to do, and then talking to people, like you said, that's already doing it. Yeah. So, so do, you, do you think um, there's a lack of, I guess, resources available that makes these opportunities more present to young uh, entrepreneurs or sports-minded individuals? No, I think it's a lack of, of mentality. I think the Bible verse that we started off with, Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. So if mm-hmm. you're a parent or you're a coach and, and all, all this is about making the NBA, then you know what? As soon as that ball stops bouncing, whether you make it or not, you're not going to know what to do. Right. Right. You're not going to know what to do. Um, I talk about it all the time. You know, The reason why I committed to the University of Buffalo out of high school is because the head coach was worth over $200 million at Wall Street. So I figured, okay, that's easy. I'm cool with him. I get a job. I had to transfer to North Florida, but before I transferred, I said, whoa, 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 I need that job. He said, okay, cool. I get the job and I, and I get to go to Florida. So I got the beach life and every summer, you know, coming up in Jersey, I go to the PATH train and I'm working at the World Financial Center on Wall Street, you know, so I got the job, you know, so I think it's a mentality and it's the reason why we're doing this up 20 podcast because um, people need to, to change the way they think about the game of basketball. And I want people to know that you can get things out of this while you're playing, you know? Mm-hmm. My, my kids my kids just getting started. They already have brands and stuff. And we're already trying to get them in the best situation possible, schooling and, and otherwise, just through the game. Yep, absolutely. You know, all that makes sense. All that makes sense. I, I know, like, like for me, I mean, at same boat, you know, started out, um, well, still, still, still working a, a full-time job, but definitely – you know, heavy in the entrepreneurial lane. I, I, basketball's been really, really good to me. Um, been able to be around some great folks and, and using some, kind of some of the tools I talked about as far as networking to, to learn and put myself in situations where I could be successful and and, and do different things. And um, I think one thing that I've seen from you 
And uh, I think I, I kind of possess some of the same traces, like looking for what's next, looking for a new opportunity or, or new new endeavor or new skill. Or one thing that I'm kind of doing right now, um, people have been asking me, um, well, of course the events piece, um, my events calendar is out by the way for, for April, May is coming, you can check my Instagram. But one thing people have been asking me about is, um, what about you know helping these kids get in school as far as like the narratives and the writing? Because I was doing a lot of that, but I kind of fell back from for a while. So you know I've I've gone into kind of trying to do some of that narrative to get back into writing. Um, starting a, a blog that will be released probably by the time this episode airs. Um, redoing my Hoopanati brand website. You guys can check that out. The IG is flowing with content right now. Um, but with all that being said, we we we've been uh, covering some basketball games and um a lot of kids uh, that are, are doing well that are. Um, I think we should, we should we should we should talk about some good teams. It's, it's a crazy year in the WCAC. Uh, yeah. Last night we watched Bishop McMahon versus uh, Paul VI, the two top teams in the WCAC. Uh, we, of course, we coach at McMahon, so you know we'll, we'll try to keep all bias out of the conversations and everything. Um, but what was your take on on that game last night? Oh man, I, I loved it because um, got the opportunity to see uh, Doug McDaniel, uh, senior point guard, one of the best in the area, going to Michigan. And I just love to see maturation and development. And one of the things that I saw was that he always knew the time to score. All right. He knew how to get to the foul line. You know, the, the smart point guards, once you get six mm -hmm. fouls, it's over. All right. If I'm coming down the lane, if I'm coming up court and um, you, you get in the wrong position, hey, I'm going to draw this foul, man. And I yep. can do some very, very good things. So um, I was in, continue to be impressed with the freshman from McNamara Curtis. Uh, to play on that level as a freshman, you know, best high school conference in the country, WCAC, it's just unbelievable. And uh, he's just relentless, man. He's out there throwing his body around, going to mm -hmm. six, ten guys, getting buckets. I mean, um, I continue to be impressed with his moxie. And um, uh, I think definitely, you know, thousand point score. Absolutely. And hands down, like, you know, sometime probably his junior year. Um, what, what are some of the things that that you saw? Um, so Doug was definitely impressive. I mean, though I, I thought he was a great player. He's been on the national scene for, for forever now. I mean, from his freshman year when he had that great game against Mont Bird, he's kind of been thrust into the spotlight. So enough can't be said about Doug. He's an exceptional player. He's done so much with his career. Uh, he's going to do great things at Michigan. Uh, you spoke about uh, Jaron Curtis, the freshman at McNamara. We've had a lot of discussion about him, how he's been impressive, not because he's scoring the ball a lot, but because of the other things he's doing in the court. Okay. I mean, at one point last night, McNamara was out a big favor, and they went really, really small, and he was guarding Paul Six big man, effectively, right. like effectively. So, you know, that kind of attributes like lead you to be successful further on. But um, I think, you know, we, 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 we always talk about the guys who put a lot of points on the board or affect the games in, in the forms of, like, creating and stuff like that. But um, that this Bishop McMurray team, they have a lot of guys who who may not necessarily be bigger names. They, they, like, you, know, you have your JQ, you got your Jaden Johnson, you got your big favor, but they got a few other guys who just hit shots. Um, yeah, one, one kid had one. one. Yeah. yeah, Chase Lawton had three, and another, another kid hit four. And we, we've seen two games, and this is a consistent thing with them. If we look at the box score, this is a consistent thing. So they got really good role players who are, who are doing their job, and they're making this McNamara team really, really good. Um, so I, I was impressed with them. Definitely want to spotlight some of the role players who don't get a lot of love. Um, we, you know, we, we watched St. John's. We, we discussed them a little bit in the last episode. Um, but there's a lot of great basketball around here locally. And I think this year with the WCAC, um, it's – People would like to say it's down. I'm like, I don't think it's down. I just think the talent's more spread out. You've got you've got great players everywhere. You've got great coaches everywhere, which is why I think the WCAC is the best league in the country, even with the NIPC. Um, but I think the, the playoffs are going to be very interesting. I'll, I'll be I'll be watching intently to see who emerges, and especially when we get ready for the spring recruiting season, or what players uh, you know, will be the ones to kind of start to to break out and make a name for themselves. Yeah, March Madness is coming, man. March Madness is always here, man. Who, who, who's, who do you have it, man? I know it's a you, we haven't seen the brackets or whatever, but if you had to pick, you know, <sighs> two teams, saying so, I, I, I normally, I normally pick from the gut, and um, you know, when it comes to college basketball, you know, we we know the game, so I mean, I can I can watch a few games. I don't even really need to look at all the stats. I just need to look at the stats, look at the baseline, see what everyone does. But looking at the eye test, every time I watch Kentucky. Even when they take losses, I get the feeling that, you know, this is different from the recent Kentucky teams. You know, right. so I like Kentucky and the team I really, really love. I, I really love Auburn and what Bruce Pearl is doing over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, if I had to put, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a betting man, but if I, if I was to bet, I would definitely have to put 
uh, a substantial, not a substantial, a good portion of money on on Bruce Pearl and Auburn University. Okay. What yeah, you think? Um, you know, Coach K's is last year. You know, everyone wants to do it for, for the Big Gipper. And one of the things I like about that team is that um, just the balance and they have an anchor. You know, always looking mm-hmm. for that anchor. So the kid, Mark Williams, man, being down there, able to block shots and make it tough and taking away layups is, is one of the things that when things get tight in that tournament, you know, that's what, you know, usually shines. And even I think last night he had a, a tip back dump against Wake Forest, you know, to win the game. Yeah. So, that's about that, it. You know, then you have Banchero, obviously, you know, great player, Trevor Kill from this area, you know, Roach from this area, you know, guys that understand the game at a high level. Um, and uh, and Griffin as well. And the other team is uh just Baylor, man. I mean, Baylor, you know, coming off a national championship, um, they they just play different, you know. In the past, it's a lot slower, two, three zone, you know, you know, kind of like Syracuse and, and trying to control the game that way, but now and getting guys that can just flat out do it, you know. So oh, absolutely um, those programs that kind of let their guards go. And if you can do it, you can do it, like the Auburns, the Kentuckys, the you know, the um, Baylors, uh, the the Dukes, um, you know, come tournament time, man, they, they're tough out. No, you know, the thing about this, and, and now that we're we're doing this podcast and then we're in this platform where um, you know, we're kind of like discussing the culture and things like that, man, we um we might got to get out and, and see some basketballs from different regions, man. I mean, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in Baltimore that's really, really good. I mean, I've got folks in Britain doing some great things and also in the Tidewater area. We might need to take the show on the road and um, go check some games out or something. Yeah, man, we, we may have to. We may have to. And I, I, I think that that would be even good for the culture because I love seeing different styles, you know, styles of play. You know, for a while we go, you know, the, the New Jersey, uh, the D.C. games were pretty good. And I see the mm-hmm. national tournament we have where people come in and you get to see all these different teams from Atlanta and Florida, yeah. you know what I'm saying, just coming to the DMV and, and, um, you know, just, just, just to see something new, you know, it's, Absolutely. Cool. it's always cool because there's so many different ways of playing this game of basketball, man. So many different ways. So uh, quick question before we, we end the podcast. So if you were a high school senior right now, and obviously you're a guard, let's say you're McDonald's All-American, um, what are your top three programs? In, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to give you out. Give me where you would go right now. You're, you're all American, and why? If, all, if I'm an all American guard right now, and the way I play, I'm heavy screen roll, heavy ISO. I like the ball in my hands. Definitely, probably thinking about my mindset as a high school senior as well. Probably need to be coached a little bit better, but need to be under a coach I can trust and feel comfortable with. I like Auburn. I like Bruce Pearl. I like what he's doing down there. That, that's that's where I would go with right now. I mean, I've, I've never really been a, a super advocate for Bruce Pearl. Uh, I don't know him personally. You know, I've never had a conversation with him, but I, you know, I've watched his programs over the years. I know people have played for him. I, I like what they're doing. I like the energy he brings. He, he's somebody that can get me excited to play every morning. You know, you know, you, you got you're gonna have to have somebody who excites you to run at four or five in the morning. That. This is what these guys are doing at these big time universities for conditioning and stuff. Because I hate conditioning, but he seems like a guy who gets you motivated to get the best out of you every day. So I'm thinking, for me, it would be Auburn. But, but what about you? Man, it, it's tough. Um, you know, me, it's always uh, looking beyond basketball. I always want to go to a place where where that degree is going to set me apart from everyone else. Um, I look at things as the, I want to go somewhere that I probably couldn't get without this basketball. You know, so these elite spaces. So I'm going to be looking at Stanford. I'm going to be looking at Harvard. I'm going to be looking at Duke. I'm going to be looking at UPenn, you know, uh, Yale. And out of those schools, um, obviously Duke probably has the, the best of all worlds because it has the platform, you know, to go to the league and and also um, just the, the fraternity. The fraternity, yeah. the brotherhood, like like people just don't, don't realize, you know, the commission, yeah, right. the commission of the ABA. You know, he went to do, you know, mm-hmm. um, it runs deep. It runs deep. Every, every basketball, you know, I'll say 60% of the ESPN commentators out there went to do, you know, whether it be Jay Williams, you got uh, Jay, Jay Billis, you know, you got guys like, you know, Dante Jones. I see him up there, you know, you know, the Shane back, like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a wink, wink, you know, I got you, 
type of network, mm -hmm. you know, and they really, really help with Grant Hill. I mean, it just goes really, really deep. So that, that would probably be, be my number one, but um, Harvard obviously speaks for itself, man. Um, you know, you graduate from Harvard, you, you pretty much in the point, you pretty much said. Zero, zero, one percent of the world. And, um, you know, you only get one shot at the Ivy league. They don't even allow transfers. I've tried <laughs> a lot. <laughs> no, I like that. I like you that. Know, they, no transfer. Sorry, coach. You know, you, you can't, can't do that. You know, um, if you don't come in from high school. So, and also, you know, Stanford has a Cali life, you know, so you, mm -hmm. you get out there in the Pac-12. I love the Pac-12 as an opportunity to grow. So, so yeah, man, uh, another great show with my man, B Dot. Um, anything else you want to plug? Anything else going on? Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, you know, spring is here. You guys know I do the, the AU events. Um, the St. James, um, I'm over there. We'll be putting out our schedule pretty soon. I posted some stuff on the IG, on my IG. You'll see some stuff on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, looking forward to that. As also uh, looking for looking forward to putting out this project with uh, Matt McIntosh. We're um, putting out like a just a passion project to help some kids get seen. Uh, a, few, a few scouting reports, some notes, articles, stuff like that. Hope you guys like it. That'll be coming to you pretty soon, man. But other than that, uh, you know. Here you go. Good stuff. As always, the show is sponsored also by Hoopanati, but BallHogGloves.com. Sporting goods, whether it be ball hog gloves or you need pads or cones or anything, check us out, ballhoggloves.com or Amazon, okay? As always, uh, I want you guys to keep pushing the culture forward. God first, work until. Up 20, run the clock. Up 20. <laughs>